So Buju and Denawe Maganadog, hello all my relatives. Um Awanakwe Ojuboy Mong, Gichione Gamin and Dunjaba, Eko and Dunanoki. hello, my name is Ivy uh Vineo. I work at the American Indian Community Housing Organization. And uh I am zooming in from the ancestral and cultural and temporary lands of the Anishinaabeg, Dakota, and Northern Cheyenne and other tribal nations. And um, just want to thank you, uh, Say Miigwech, to all of you for joining us today for this um, webinar. And uh, just a little bit about ACO for those of you that don't know. Uh, the American Indian Community Housing Organization is an indigenous people first led uh, nonprofit organization in Onigamincin in Duluth, where we provide housing, a domestic emergency, domestic violence shelter, cultural arts center, indigenous centered retail space with indigenous first art and gift shop, and more. All of our work is anchored in our mission to honor the resiliency of indigenous people by strengthening communities and centering indigenous values in all aspects of our work. Our philosophy is that every American Indian deserves to live in nonviolent and non-threatening environment and has the right to be treated with dignity and respect. Uh, I forgot that my, to say my pronouns are she and her. Uh, one of our one of ACO's main uh, priorities and focuses is uh, on indigenous food sovereignty. We provide advocacy, opportunities, programming, and access to healthy ancestral and indigenous foods that build and strengthen connections between land, community, and local, regional, and national indigenous and BIPOC entrepreneurs, youth included, food producers, and artists. We work to create a thriving and equitable indigenous local economy and representation within our food sovereignty movement. We wanna say thank you to our funders, which is the Northwest Area Foundation and the Duluth LISC um, for uh, today's session and supporting indigenous food entrepreneurs and this food movement. Um, I don't have a prayer that I'm going to say, but I do wanna say that I did offer some a SEMA that I grew in my Gitagan last summer and fall um, to the spirits. And I asked that, um, I asked for protection for all the panelists and all the uh, attendees of this session um, and that we will uh, go forward in a good way um, with respect for each other and, um, and all of that. So I did put that uh, tobacco offering out for all of us. Um, and just before I turn it over to Danny, our amazing facilitator, um, I want to remind everybody that today is World Health Day, and the focus is our planet, our health. Um, and the organizers uh, want us to reimagine a world where clean air, water, and food are available to all where economies are focused on health and well-being, and where cities are livable and people have control over the health and the health of our mama aki. And so um, I, that's a really good reminder for all of us to, to think about our connections in this world and um, with each other, with our plant relatives, with our water, um, and how we can um, uh, provide action every day to, to protect these things that matter to us. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Danny uh, Piratos. Uh, so Danny, take it away. Miigwech, Ivy. Always love your introductions and for getting us going in a good way. So Buju, hello, I'm Danny Piratos. I am from the Lake Vermilion Res, District 2 of the Boys Sport Band. And I am very excited uh, to have the honor of uh, moderating, moderating today's event. Um, so we're all here today to hear about uh, technical assistance and resources in the area um, to support our BIPOC and indigenous uh, food and farm producers, entrepreneurs, 
And so um, our agenda today, if you could bring it up, Becky, Chi, McGwish, there it is. Um, we're lucky to have with us Mary Lundeen with the Northland Small Business Development Center, uh, Rachel Armstrong with Farm Commons, Andrea Black with the Entrepreneur Fund, Dan Cornelius with the Intertribal Agriculture Council, uh, Midwest Chapter Representative, Audra Tanika, she's with the White Earth Investment Initiative, and Shannon Kesner with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. And so the presentations will go in that order. They will present for about five minutes and then we'll allow for about five minutes of Q&A uh, right after their presentation. So feel free to put your questions in the chat or you can um, unmute mute yourself or maybe Becky, you could help with the muting. Um, and then at the end, we'll have um, some time, maybe about seven minutes or so to talk through just open discussion. If you didn't get a chance to ask a question earlier, that would be the time. Um, we'll also have a survey, uh, post-event survey, just to get feedback and to see if you would like to connect with anyone individually. I'd love to uh, do an email introduction. Um, and then at the end, we'll talk about upcoming events and opportunities. So with that, our first presenters are Cayman and Avery with the Indigenous First Gift Shop. Wushu, thanks, Danny. Thank Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, we just wanted to hop on quickly here and introduce ourselves. We are the Indigenous First Art and Gift Shop. My name is Avery Makesroom, and I co-coordinate the gift shop with Cayman Good Sky. <laughs> um, we work on food sovereignty work with cultural events here at ACO. Our mission is to highlight and support Indigenous and diverse artists, authors, and food producers. Um, at Indigenous First, we work with more than 80 artists and food producers. That number is a little outdated. We're thinking close to 100. Yep, shown here are a few of our artists and food producers from Patcher Wise, showing off their wild rice to, to Tashia Hart at her book signing and Delilah Savage selling her wild rice cupcakes at Ego's Lobby earlier this year. Mm -hmm. There's also a uh, Herb Fine Day down there. And the next slide's fine. And if you are interested in potentially working with us, uh, you can contact us at our phone number 218-590-3305 <clears throat> or email us at indigenousfirst at aco.org. And for more information, and if you wanted to shop with us, visit our website at indigenousfirst.org. Thank you. Thank you. We got you too. It's awesome we have a retail market hub in northeastern Minnesota. I don't know what I would do without you and your guys' support for our products. Chi Maguich. All okay. right. Uh, Mary Lundin is our next presenter. Uh, Mary is a professional business consultant, again, with the Northland Small Business Development Center. Um, I do some small outreach contracting with the Northland Small Business Development Center. Um, so if you'd like to reach out to Mary directly, I'll put her email in the chat. Otherwise, you can contact me as well. Thank you, Mary, for sharing with us. Thank you, and boozhoo, everyone. Uh, as Danny said, my name is Mary Lundin, and I am a business consultant with the Northland Small Business Development Center. I've got a PowerPoint. I'm going to try to pull up here. Um, So we have a mission just like ACO does. Ours is helping businesses start, grow, and succeed. And I do it from the Duluth office. This is our footprint. Uh, the Northland Small Business Development Center really covers Northeastern Minnesota. And, and can everyone see the PowerPoint? Everyone see it? Okay. Um, and you'll see the, the reservations that we cover. So anyone located in this footprint can, can have access to our services, um, we have about seven different locations. Uh, we have office in, uh, we're up in Grand Marais, International Falls, Grand Rapids, Duluth, Virginia, Hibbing, and I think that's it. Um, and we, we, we mainly provide technical assistance. And I'm gonna talk a little bit. So our services fall into three categories, that technical assistance that I mentioned, business consulting, we do workshops and seminars, and then we often just um, get 
clients access to different resources. Talking a little bit about each one of them, our primary focus is the business consulting. Um, myself, I'm located and cover the Duluth and Cloquet area. Um, what's important about this is the, that the consulting, which is working one-on-one -on -one with entrepreneurs, uh, business owners, is confidential and at no cost. We are a nonprofit and funded primarily by the Small Business Administration, and I refer to that oftentimes as SBA, and then other local and regional um, economic development agencies like DEED, the City of Duluth, some local banks. Uh, but the services that we provide are listed here, and I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'll talk a little bit about kind of starting a business because some of you are entrepreneurs. So starting a business, we have a, like a checklist of most of the common things that you need to do when you're going to start a business. And we go over that with clients and then help them and advise them as they go, as they navigate, because uh, it can be overwhelming. And then uh, it oftentimes includes writing a business plan, helping with projections, uh, maybe doing working on a loan application. And then once you're open, maybe you need your website or you need help with marketing and advertising, or you may even be looking to hire employees. And we have consultants who can help with that as well. Um, as Danny said, we were very fortunate to bring her on as an independent consultant about a year ago, Danny, maybe. And, um, and so she does uh, consulting and outreach for us in northern Minnesota. And we are very happy to have her and very fortunate. The second thing we do is offer workshops and seminars. And like every other business that has changed since 2020, we used to do a lot of these uh, in person. We would uh, we do starting a business at the uh, Career Force Center. Now most of it is done via Zoom. We've also pre-recorded some of our workshops and they can be found on our website and you're gonna get a link for that at the end of the workshop, uh, end of my presentation. Um, but here's some of the topics. So we've had a lot of people had to deal with HR and with COVID. And so uh, we have Ravina Claxton who has done some workshops on that. Uh, but marketing, you know, planning for year-end financing once your business is open. So those are some of the topics. And I'm sure we'll go back to face-to-face -face workshops in the future, but this has worked out well for us. And then access to resources. So we have affiliations with some of the local colleges and universities and can get uh, access to economic industry and market data that you might not be able to find on Google. Um, and then professional resources. We'll partner sometimes with um, professionals in, within the community. And, and sometimes this really is simply having a client say, I need an accountant or I need an attorney or you know, I need someone to help me find a place to rent. And so we collect, at least I do, I collect these names from clients of resources that they've used and share that. And we always try to give two or three names whenever someone asks for that type of resource. We have templates for like a business plan, for projections, for record keeping, for a lot of different things on our website that you can get and they're at no cost. We also have a YouTube channel and um, links to economic development partners. One thing we don't do that I didn't mention is we do not lend money. Uh, so you'll hear from Andrea Black with the Entrepreneur Fund. They provide some of the similar uh, services and technical assistance we do, but they also make loans to businesses, whereas we uh, exclusively provide technical assistance. These are some of our deliverables and our demographics and a couple of important ones. In 2021, uh, there were, we helped people create 100 jobs, get 19, almost $20 million in funding. And we work about 18% of the people we work with are minorities, veterans are 7%, and female-owned business is 41%. I just wanted to, um, did want to mention that uh, the agency that funds us, the Small Business Administration, or SBA, is a lender, and I will let Andrea talk a little bit more about this, but uh, they are lending partner to banks and uh, other lending uh, institution. They make the loan. Uh, the lender does to you, but the SBA gets involved to reduce that lender's risk. So if you wanted to work with some of us, remember I said our services are confidential and at no cost. 
you can visit our website. This is a, a picture of part of our homepage. You would click on request for services and our website is northlandsbdc.org. And this is really easy. It takes maybe five minutes. You need to enter some contact information and uh, select a password. So you'd fill that in. Then you'll get to a screen and you need to pick where you're located. So wherever you are going to be opening your business or starting your business, you'd click on um, the, the red locator that's closest to you. And that will help us determine who to assign you to. We have an intake person who once you've registered, we, you click on the sign up, but once you register that intake person will then send you a welcome email and notify or, and then assign you to a consultant. We have about 13 um, and the consultant will contact you. This is the, um, you'll enter some information about yourself and about your business so that we kind of know what it is you want to do and where you are. And as it says, we're gonna connect with you. So you're done. And uh, this is, I think is just about the end. These are resources, um, our website, and Danny is our outreach consultant. And there's her email address, my email address as well. Um, so Minnesota, we are the North, we represent Northeast Minnesota, but there are SBDC offices in every state in the country. And if you are you, you are going to be moving out to another state or, or you know someone in another state that might need help, you could visit the americasbdc.org website and you put in either your zip code, your city, um, and it will find you a SBDC office. And then also the, the last one of the SBA, the Small Business Administration, their website is listed here. And the reason it's here is that they have a lot of really good uh, webinars and, and information for small businesses who want, or, or entrepreneurs who want to start a business. Lots of really good information and it's free. Thank you, Migwitch. And any questions? And I will stop sharing. Migwitch Mary, I haven't seen any questions in the chat yet. So if there's any folks right now that want to unmute or put them in, we'll just kind of hang out here for a minute or two just so we don't miss anyone. Yep. Danny, while we're waiting for questions, there were a couple questions that you shared with us. And while I uh, some of them don't apply uh, to the SVDC or I might not have information, I, there were a couple things that I, I can uh, address. Um, talking about grants, um, do we know of any grants? And I bet you some of the other uh, uh, presenters will have more information for agriculture-based grants, but and Lincoln Park Equilibrium 3 sometimes has grants. The USDA and SAR, they also have grants. Um, developing markets. Oh, um, oh, one of the questions was maybe how can we help? Um, and we are out uh, and, and to, to increase and to be more effective in helping people in the BIPOC community. We are always, we are, that is one of our objectives in 2022. We are always trying to do more, but we always can do more. And we welcome um, your information, your feedback, your recommendations. Um, Danny, was there any other question that you want me to? What might help is kind of exploring, there's one um, on developing markets and specifically for craft foods, but in general, um, Northland Small Business Development Center, in terms of developing a market or doing that kind of research you had touched on. Um, oh, okay. So we have access to um, resources through the colleges and universities. So they're, they're research libraries and we can get data from um, a variety of different sources. And there are actually the Northland Foundation uh, has developed a resource that we can get to. So if you were 
let's say you wanted to um, you wanted to go into a certain kind of a business, a value added product, and it's it, and you said, well, I'm I'm looking for the best space place to start this business or locate my business. So we can get things like population, traffic counts, um, some of that kind of information. We use a service called S3 um, and, um, and some other that are um, BizMiner. We use um, uh, just a variety of different resources that we can at, at, at access. We used to have student researchers that would work for us. And unfortunately, funding has kind of eliminated that. Um, and some of the things, you know, we we, we, when I was looking at that question, um, uh, for CSAs, pop-ups are always good. Grocery stores, even now, you'll see some of the Super One stores carrying local organic grown, organically sourced uh, foods. The, the co-op is also another place where a lot of people can can sell their their goods. Thank which Mary. We have uh, Elizabeth with her hand raised, so we'll call you up for your question. Hello, can you Hi, hear me? Hi, Wuju. how are you doing? I'm doing well. It's great to have you with us. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't able to register because I got the link um, yesterday. So just kind of want to in introduce myself. Um, my name is Elizabeth Skinaway and um, I'm from Big Sandy Lake in well, central Minnesota. And um, a couple of years ago, I had started a uh, uh, wild rice camp with a friend of mine um, and the purpose of it was to to um, um, teach people in the area non-native and native about the importance of Monoman wild rice um, because I was aware I, I became aware that a lot of people in the area um, did not know anything about wild rice with the plant about the plant and um, um, I realized that in order for, well, there's a, nick, a proposed nickel mine coming up in Tamarack and I and a lot of people aren't aware that that nickel mine um, will, will release a lot of sulfide and um, it will kill the monoman plant. And I've been harvesting for 42 years, this year will be 42 years. And in order to, um, save this this some um, gift from the creator I figured you know we need to educate the people in the area about just how delicate and important this resource is to us so a couple of years ago I started the camp and and um, it's been uh, you know just a grassroots type thing um, and uh, and it's it's coming along. I mean, you know, by word of mouth, I I haven't really been. Um, I guess you could say I haven't really been, you know, out there with signs or anything for the for the camp. But I do realize that that um this is you know a really important um, important issue to save our wild rice because a lot of businesses hinge on the wild rice in Indian country, and including, yeah, including because mine. Because Elizabeth, um, I will love to connect you directly with Mary and myself after. Um, my, my boys and I, we go out and we rice, and we've already noticed, you know, the impact in our area of, of tailings from regular mining. I'm going to put my email in the chat, and just for the sake of time, we're going to invite Rachel to speak. Okay, thank you. Miigwech, Elizabeth. It is great to meet you, and thank you for the work that you do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel with Farm Commons. She is the executive director, which empowers agriculture, agricultural communities to resolve our own legal vulnerabilities within an ecosystem of support. Chi miigwech, Rachel. All right. Hello and uh, bushu, everyone. It's great to be here with you today. Um, I am going to uh, get things going here and share 
um, share my little PowerPoint with you. Um, just one second. Okay. And I'm just going to pipe in real quick. If we could save the question Q&A till the end after all the panelists have spoke, I think that will save us some time, you know, so language. All right. Hopefully you're seeing um, my presentation right in front of you. I'm going to get right into it. Have you ever asked yourself, gosh, should I be creating an LLC or a corporation? For what I'm doing, I mean, I don't, maybe it's a business, maybe it's just a hobby, but do you need one? And if so, which one? What happens if someone is injured? Maybe there's a food safety incident. Maybe somebody slips and falls while coming to get your product. Should you have insurance for that? Have you ever asked yourself, well, I need to hire somebody, but, but uh, what rules and regulations apply? How do I navigate them? We know a lot of folks have interns, what about volunteers? Can we do that? Especially if they have that when they're just starting out with their business. Most folks start running a business out of their home, whether they are uh, making food or growing products. Should we be worried about anything there? Maybe some zoning rules. Oh, the questions that continue, right? What if you're leasing land from someone else? Well, should your lease be in writing? If so, well, what's it supposed to say? When folks start selling their products to others, maybe, you know, to Super One or something like that, well, should there be an agreement in place? What legal details might we be looking at at this time? All right, so you deserve answers to these questions. And common business practice as well, I don't know, if you've got a question that relates to the law, maybe you should go to an attorney. Nothing wrong with that. And yes, attorneys can always be helpful, but we also know that that just isn't feasible for a lot of folks. Attorneys cost money. We don't know how to be effective. We don't really know what our question is or how to uh, you know, find movement forward. The good news is that you don't have to start with an attorney. There is a tremendous amount that you can learn and do for yourself to control your risks and comply with obligations. And even if working with an attorney is right for you, um, when that becomes necessary, you deserve to be prepared to get the help that you need to, to be informed about the process and to really be in the driver's seat. And that's where Farm Commons comes in. So we empower small business communities to address their own legal vulnerabilities within an ecosystem of support. Our name is Farm Commons, and that reflects that um, our, our focus is on farmer ranch businesses and also food businesses. But at the same time, we really address the fundamentals of small business law. These issues are relatable to everybody. We started out in farming because, well, that's my background. What we do is we provide educational resources, guides, guides online, we, workshops. They used to be in person, now they're online. Webinars, podcasts, we have a question and answer platform. We also believe deeply that the people affected by the problem are those who should be creating the solution. So we focus on leadership development. We, um, we know that although attorneys have a lot of value to provide, I'll get to my introduction, I am an attorney, um, we know that attorneys are not the most creative folks out there and probably don't truly understand what you're doing and the values that you bring to the table. So it's really important that we learn how to center your leadership and, and the, uh, the values that you already have in what you're doing with your food or farm business. So leadership development is an important part of that. It's not just here's the facts, but it's how can you live out what, what is important to you through those facts. A little bit about me, I'm Rachel. Um, I live in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, I'm the executive director and the founder. I'm also an attorney. Um, I do this work because I believe you deserve this information so that you can develop resilience that is consistent with your values. So that's where we come from. Grew up in Twig, Minnesota. Went away to go to school and you know how it is. Came back, love it here. I wanna encourage you to explore our resources. The number one thing I can offer is a workshop called Discovering Resilience. You can learn the 10 legal best practices of a resilient business. 
focused on farm and food businesses, but if that's not your jam, if you're more of a craft producer or something like that, still it's really, there's so much relevance in there. I would say a good 40, 60% still gonna be great. You can read 100 plus guides on farm business law and small business law overall. If reading is your thing, or you like to print off some PDFs, we can, we can help you out there. If listening is more your style, we've got a podcast and a newsletter. And if you, uh, if you join and get access to our website, you can also ask us questions. We are happy to help you understand, well, where should I start? Which guide? Do you got an answer for me? We're there for you. We are a membership-driven organization. Um, membership makes it possible. And we have separate membership categories for if you're a food or farm producer or a service provider. We encourage you to take advantage of our BIPOC scholarship. I've got a link right there in my, um, in my slide and I'll put it in the chat box. Um, free access, you can get um, everything we've got, the Discovering Resilience Workshop, all of our resources, ask us questions. We would love to have you. And again, your feedback is important to us. Um, if you take advantage of the BIPAC scholarship, we may reach out with opportunities to let you, to let us know about your experience, your questions, and your thoughts. And we always provide compensation when we ask for your feedback. Now, a couple of things that we don't do, just to be sure that, um, that you, know, you have an accurate idea of what we can do. If you've ever asked yourself, what permits and licenses do I need for my food and farm business? I'm gonna send you right to Minnesota Department of Agriculture, if that's where you are at um, in Minnesota. They have a food licensing liaison that they can hook you up with who is gonna give you one-on-one -on -one support in terms of figuring out which permit and license you need. If you're in Wisconsin, um, with the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection has a local food marketing guide that is also an excellent place to start, it thoroughly goes through the food and farm related permits and licenses. So important um, compliments to us. I'll also say we don't provide referrals to attorneys. That's actually complicated um, for us for a number of different reasons, and we don't provide legal services ourselves. I want you to know you can trust us for objective, accurate educational information. We're not doing this so that you will choose to hire us as your attorneys. So that's the limits of what we do. And happy to stick around and take your questions as we uh, as we get to the end. So thank you and miigwech for the opportunity. I'll hand it over to Danny again. Fabulous, miigwech Rachel. So it was really easy. I signed up for the BIPOC membership and signed up for the uh, Discovering Resiliency Workshop. And I got a workbook in the mail within like a week or so. So thank you for your quick action there. We appreciate it very much. Um, our next presenter, and we are holding questions now until the end. So Andrea Black with the Entrepreneur Fund. Um, Andrea is the Director of Business Services, which also recently launched a diversity platform. And so we're happy to have you with us to talk about what eFund has to offer. Hello, uh, I'm going to just give me a minute to share my screen. Go through my PowerPoint. Um, I did want to say that all of the photos, we, we are big on photos and all of them have been approved um, by people that we work with. So you might recognize them as I believe one of the business owners is represented in our group. <laughs> um, so the Entrepreneur Fund, we are a nonprofit as well. Uh, we're a CDFI, which is a Community Development Investment. Um, I missed one. Community Development Financial Institution. Thank you. Um, and so we, we do advising and loans uh, to entrepreneurs to start, grow, build their businesses. We work in 17 counties across Minnesota, one in Wisconsin. Here's a little uh, picture of where we're located. Where the stars are, are where our, um, our staff is. So you might be near one of our staff members and it'll be easy to reach you from there. Who um, We serve in 2021, we worked with over a thousand small businesses, over 2000 entrepreneurs. So people that are looking to get into business or have questions about business, 15% uh, were people of color. I can't see my screen very well here, so bear with me. Um, I'm gonna move you, there you go. 23% uh, of businesses uh, were startups, 64% were women, 
59% are growth orientated. We kind of tend, we tend to look at businesses um, based on what their level of success is and what they're interested in success. And uh, we look at businesses that way. So if they're growth orientated, they're going towards a goal, whatever that goal is to them, uh, they go in this category and 68% of the businesses, I have one on the screen, are in rural communities. There we go. Okay, so we, we have a new diversity platform. Uh, we were awarded a chunk of money from Wells Fargo. So we're able to offer this program and it is focused on advancing economic justice through entrepreneurship. Uh, with entrepreneurs that go through this program will have an opportunity for 0% interest loans. We have grants, um, education courses, kind of small education courses. The goal is though to create a really solid plan with projections. Um, prepare for loans if that's something that you want to do or a strategic plan if you're currently in business. Um, access to what we call our expert network. Uh, expert network is connecting you with a marketing consultant or someone that, that can get really deep and specific about a project within your business. Uh, we also have a QuickBooks consultant on staff and she can help implement QuickBooks in your business if that's something that you're interested in. And then the one-on-one -on -one support from a business advisor. And we, are, we have a committee that we're putting together uh, that will provide feedback to the entrepreneurs. And the committee will consist of um, successful entrepreneurs of color and um, leaders within the community. So we're really excited about that opportunity. Uh, the Entrepreneur Fund looks at, and this is very common for CDFIs. Uh, we aren't just here to, to lend money. There's the technical assistance, the business advising piece that is surrounding all of our clients that get loans with us. Um, oftentimes clients come to us and receive a loan to get started. And then they come back when they have a project of expansion or something else that they need help with. So I believe we average about three to four loans per client in the end uh, as they progress throughout their business. Um, Business advising, we do some work similar to the SBDC. A lot of our work is, is kind of surrounded um, by loans. And so preparing for loans, all these pieces, you want to have those down before you, you're, you get money um, from us. And if someone were to work with Mary or anyone at the SBDC and come to us for, for lending, we absolutely love that. So we like to work with our other, uh, the other providers in our area as well. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our financing options. Um, we are very flexible. Sometimes clients, they get a loan and maybe they're struggling and we work with them to figure that out or uh, we find uh, loan pro programs that are the best fit. Uh, the word here, gap financing, sometimes that comes to play. If you have a really large project and we can only do a certain part of it and then we might work with a bank to do the other part or vice versa, a bank might say, we can only do this percentage of the product or the, the project and then you can come to us and we can help get it done that way. Uh, we do have a healthy food funding program. Uh, it's specific for businesses that are either providing food, selling food, growing food. Uh, you can see that these are some of the things that the loan would be used for. Um, equipment, investing in technology, expanding businesses, uh, inventory staff, updating in ex, you know, the interior um, and, or purchasing a store. Uh, so I don't have all the specific details about this program here, but we can definitely talk about that offline as well. Uh, microloan program, this is one I said you might be familiar with the business on here. Um, our microloan program is an SBA program and uh, Mary alluded to SBA, the Small Business Association. You might be seeing that wrong. Um, and we, can loan up to 50,000 in this program and the SBA backs uh, the program. So we have a little bit of an opportunity to lend to riskier uh, businesses. And that's why we're able to work with nearly everyone that comes through our door in some way, shape or form. Yeah, so that's mostly us. Um, I think the most important thing about the Entrepreneur Fund or the SBDC or those of us that are here to help businesses is really it's about figuring out um, what success means to you and building plans around that. So yeah, feel free to reach out to me directly if you want. Our website is here. 
Uh, there's lots and lots of information on our website um, as well. So, thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech, Andrea. Um, I will say one thing I've liked about the Northland Small Business Development Center and eFund is I've been able to test my businessy jargon on folks, our advisors, to feel more comfortable in like the businessy settings. Um, so it, great, great people to work with at, at all of these organizations. Um, so thank you for your grace and leadership. And up next, we have uh, Dan Cornelius. Uh, he is a technical assistance provider for the Midwest with the Intertribal Agriculture Council. Take it away, Dan. Thank you. Um, so today I wanna talk about, I'm gonna talk about, sorry. Uh, I apologize, I'm, um, unfortunately needing to be in my car right now and I'm just taking it off of Bluetooth. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, that sounds better. Thank you. We might have lost you again. I'm not sure if it's my internet also. Okay, sorry. I, my audio, I, I think I think it's working now. Can, you can okay, hear me okay? there we go. Yep, yep, that's perfect. Great. Well, I want to talk about a uh, um, exciting, uh, a couple of exciting pilot food distribution efforts that um, that we've been working on. If uh, if folks have been on the Minnesota Department of Agriculture monthly calls, I've shared some of this on there already. But I think it's really important to look at when we when we talk about supporting entrepreneurs, when we talk about when we talk about really having more support to feed our communities. What, what does that mean? What does it mean for tribes to be able to have more control over our food systems? And what does it mean to really strengthen and build the intertribal food system? That's a bit of what I wanna share on a couple of pilot projects that we've been working on over the past year and a major funding opportunity that's open right now. Um, so and just going back, thinking about where were we two years ago? And two years ago with store shelves being, being, being empty, people really thinking about, about food security and being able to just have access to food. And what happens if you go to a store and, and you, you can't go buy groceries? We had a, a very small glimpse of it at the beginning of the pandemic and with the shutdowns and a lot of people panic buying, you know, that fairly quickly transitioned to, um, you know, for a lot of our communities, semi trucks rolling in of the USDA food boxes that was really a response to um, to uh, agricultural producers losing markets um, processing challenges and really trying to find making sure that there's a market for for those foods and also that there was food for the community for communities but when you've got semi trailers of milk rolling in to you know to native communities how how well does that really fit with uh, people's, you know, dietary preferences, uh, a lot of lactose intolerance in our in our tribal communities, and so it really we we asked the question of if we could if we could control these nutrition programs and um, and, and really have that control over over our food system, what would what would it look like? And so a couple of, of efforts, uh, one is, is through USDA, through the Commodity Food Distribution Program, or um, FDIPR, the, the Food Distribution Program in Indian Reservations, we, uh, we did a joint uh, effort between Menominee and Oneida, and we're able to get uh, hand harvested wild rice from uh, Bruce and Tawny Savage at Spirit Lake Native Farms. We're able to get uh, whitefish, lake trout um, from Red Cliff uh, Fish Company, and then um, an assortment of products from from Oneida, and, um, and that was that was the first effort. About and about this time that that application was due, we were able to um, to put an application in and, and fund a tribal elder food box uh, funding through Feeding America, and we started last year with four hundred twenty eight thousand dollars. We put out almost eleven thousand food boxes and really had the freedom and the flexibility 
to buy, um, you know, our only limitation was that it needed to be perishable items. But we were able to, to put out um, almost 11,000 boxes to tribal elders, starting with Oneida, Menominee, and Redcliffe. And then we expanded out to, um, to several additional communities. This year, that project has expanded to 1.3 million in, in funding. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really our main challenge now is being able to find enough tribal producers um, because we haven't had enough tribal producers. We've worked then with other uh, small producers, a lot of mung growers in the Eau Claire area, but really building out that, uh, that network to, uh, to launch a regional intertribal cooperative is, is the ultimate end goal. And the huge funding opportunity that's open right now, now this is limited to governments. So I know uh, we've got Shannon from Minnesota Ag Department, I believe is looking at an application for something called the local food per, local food purchase assistance cooperative agreement usda is putting 410 million dollars out and so it's eligible to it's open to state and tribal governments um so it, while individuals aren't going to be able to apply directly if we can get enough of our tribal governments applying or working with um you know with the state governments it's a great opportunity if the program is intended to purchase from socially disadvantaged producers and then distribute the food in historically underserved communities. I know that Minnesota, the estimated allocation is 4.6 million and 40% of that is, is targeted toward tribes. So if tribes don't apply, the money is gonna to go to the Minnesota Ag Department. And um, I know we're working in Wisconsin to make sure that if if tribes don't apply that, um, that that the Wisconsin Ag Department still is gonna put that money toward serving tribal communities. We're also working on a concept right now for an intertribal consortium for maybe some tribes who are interested but don't feel they can take on the whole effort to, uh, to allow an opportunity to participate in a more coordinated campaign and effort. And um, I'm trying to really get as much product from our tribal producers as possible. If people are interested in participating immediately in the tribal elder food box, we are still working to recruit producers for this year. So that's, uh, um, that's just an, an update on a couple of, the, of, of these innovative uh, food distribution pilots. If people have questions on other USDA programs, I'm glad to provide additional assistance. Woohoo! That is a lot of inspiring work and coordination, miigwech, Dan. Um, in the chat, I put in some video links um, that showcase your work that I found on the Grandma Google. Um, but just to echo again that Dan is looking for producers uh, to supply the elder food boxes and partners uh, for the USDA Local Food Purchase Assistance Cooperative Agreement Program. I uh, just want to inspire folks also to reach out to their tribal governments to let them know that's available. Um, and at Boys Fort, we've done an MOU with our tribal government on food sovereignty. Um, so we might uh, circle back around with that at Boys Fort. But at any point, um, yeah, definitely uh, appreciate all of these opportunities. And whether through me or through the chat, I'll put Dan's email in there. Um, we'll connect everybody um, in this big realm that all this opportunity. All right, I am gonna put Dan's email in. One, one quick, one, what? yeah, and one quick additional note. So I have a, I've got a part-time position at the University of Wisconsin Law School. And one of the efforts that we're working on is we have right now a draft model code for, um, for, for co-op incorporation that you can incorporate if we get enough tribes to adopt it. We want the ability to be able to, to incorporate directly under tribal law versus being forced to go to a state. And I think it comes back also to the food safety is, you know, I know, I know a lot, sometimes our tribal governments, there can be issues of supporting individual businesses, but at least trying to build that capacity to, to have our tribes being able to provide that support to our uh, to our tribal businesses is one other side note that I wanted to mention and we're actively working to uh, to get that code ready for a couple of tribes to adopt. Even better, yes, that legal infrastructure. Chi Miigwech Dan for all that you do and for sharing with us today. Um, we are going to move on with our next presenter just to stay close to our time here. 
And we have next is Audra Tonika with the White Earth Investment Initiative, which creates new jobs, improves community life, and provides assistance to Native American communities in Minnesota, particularly the White Earth uh, Reservation. And thank you, Audra, for being with us. Good afternoon, um, Buju. My name is Audra Tanika. I am the Vice President of Lending for White Earth Investment Initiative. And White Earth Investment Initiative is a nonprofit loan fund. And so the types of products we are currently offering are consumer loans um, and then business loans of all sizes, um, shapes, and forms. Um, right now, I will we'll be highlighting the business loan aspect that we provide. Um, so we do all types of loans that range from a couple hundred bucks up to a couple of million. Um, and right now, our target market is pretty much anybody that is within Minnesota and um, self-identify as native owned or operated um, or controlled, anything like that. Um, we do a wide variety of businesses. Um, from time to time, we did uh, provide or do provide um, loans that deal with livestock and agricultural. Um, and I've seen that trend starting to grow um, significantly in the past couple of years. Um, but also, if you know, if there's businesses located in Superior or Wisconsin or North Dakota, South Dakota, um, we can always we kind of grow with our borrowers. You know, our borrowers really come through the door and say, "Hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I need. Um, is there an opportunity um, to get financing through you guys?" And so that's how we kind of um, been expanding is through um, various borrowers walking through the door and then helping them grow, which helps us grow also. Um, uh, right now we are, um, we don't really do a whole lot of technical assistance. We leave that to uh, other providers like the SBDC, Small Business Development Centers. Um, in the future, we're hoping to connect um, prospective borrowers and current borrowers with one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, consultants. So if they need a lawyer or if they need tax advice, they can go to the lawyer or um, tax preparer or of their choice. Um, we don't choose for them or anything like that. We just basically want to help them answer their questions and, and get everything down and rolling. Um, but I will uh, keep it short for time's sake. Uh, I will definitely hang around if you guys have any additional questions. Um, email is always good to reach me. Uh, you can check out our website and uh, a phone call. Audra, I have a quick question. Uh, this is Ivy. Um, so can you clarify again, who is eligible? Do you have to be a White Earth member? You do not, no, no. Um, you just have to, like I said, any native owned, operated, controlled entity, business, startup, something like that um, within Minnesota. Um, but yeah, we're not going to say no if they're from Wisconsin or um, North Dakota or South Dakota. Most recently, I've been getting a lot of calls from White Earth members out in the Seattle area. And while we don't necessarily provide services that far, you know, it, it's actually worth a visit to just just to see, you know, why, you know, what's going on, what are you guys up to? Maybe we can, you know, provide financing out here um, and just try to work that out. So yeah, we just kind of more or less grow with whoever's walking through the door. Miigwech. Miigwech, Audra, just like a good auntie. I always feel like programs that will just let you write in and, and talk through different, you know, needs or where you're at is, is incredible help just in and of itself. Miigwech. Um, all right, we are going to segue now to Shannon Kesner with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. She is our tribal liaison. Miigwech, Shannon, for being with us. Yeah, thank you. And I'm I'm getting an alert that my band was low. I might have to turn video at some point. No and problem. actually, I'm going to proactively do that. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Shannon Kessner. I'm a Fond du Lac band member, uh, grew up there uh, my entire life. And just recently uh, in 2020, took on the role as travel liaison with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. And I'm here to myself as a contact for one, um, please reach out to me if you have um, any questions about programs that we provide, but just to let you know that we do have some places uh, just for, especially for emerging farmers. I know a, a lot in the indigenous community, communities are, you know, kind of just starting up and they're emerging into this, this space. And so we actually have an office dedicated just for you folks, uh, the emerging farmers office where you can um, access a lot of our resources. Uh, one of those things that I think is really helpful for those uh, that maybe haven't jumped in quite yet or are at the beginning stages of producing is our starting a food business roadmap, which is really helpful. It gives you, it's like a step-by-step -step, um, instruction and how to get your, your idea off the ground and, and running. Is, and that includes things like licensing. Um, grants, whatever is needed for, for you all to, to get your products out there. Um, and so I will also, I'll, I'll send links to these resources to this group. And can, Danny, can you make sure that those things get sent out? Yes, most definitely. IV as well. Thank you. Yeah. And um, let's see, I just want to make it very clear that uh, MDA is really um, trying to be at the forefront of um, um, availability to underserved communities, indigenous communities, tribal folks, BIPOC groups, um, uh, emerging farmers, um, and trying to make MDA as an agency in our programs more accessible. Um, and so just so you know, you're eligible for all of these grants. Um, and if you have any questions about a particular grant, there's, um, there's a few that would probably fit uh, the folks on this call really well, like our sustainable agricultural grants, um, which are, um, can support uh, specialty crops and things like that, that maybe don't fit like the typical ag, you know, agricultural definition, which I think may be the case for some of you on the call. So that might be helpful to know um, that we do have grants dedicated just for that. Um, also, just to keep you up to date with, with some of the work that's happening in the legislation is there are bills in both the Senate and uh, the House that are geared towards um, a grant program to support cooperatives. And I know that that might be of interest to you folks here. Um, and so keep an eye on that, um, that we're really hopeful that that will pass this legislation and that in the very near future, there'll be funds allocated to that program. Um, I know that there's, um, a resounding sentiment that cooperatives are a pretty good way to, to get off the ground and um, get your feet wet in the agricultural world, in the producer world. And so we want to be able to support that. Um, and I think that's all I have for now. Um, I could take any questions if, if anybody has any. Great hey, Shannon. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, you can either put them in the chat or raise your hand and unmute. Um, and so Shannon, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's really empowering to have our tribal liaison um, here with us with the Department of Ag. Um, also, Shannon hosts monthly meetings um, to also share resources like she's doing right now, um, either between um, you know, Minnesota Department of Ag itself or other opportunities that are out there and she'll bring in um, even the assistant commissioner of the Department of Ag so you can have that direct connection and 
Um, thank you for being that um, communication and referral resource with us. Thank you. Um, so the, floor, <laughs> the floor is open for any questions anyone might have. Or any of the panelists. I'm just gonna draw folks' attention to the chat. Um, when, a little farther up, um, Shannon was talking about the Emerging Farmers Group. Um, it looks like uh, from Brian Bloom, he had mentioned there is a state effort that's also working with the local food purchase assistance program um, that's being led by the Emerging Farmers Group. Um, so if you wanna, uh, check that out um, and as another resource to access that co-op or local food purchasing. Um, but otherwise, I, if, if your tribal government is open to communication and collaboration, I would highly recommend um, touching base with them and seeing if you could maybe co-sponsor an application. I haven't seen any questions yet. Uh, for follow-up, what we can do is all of these amazing resources we've had shared today. Um, Ivy's gonna be emailing out a survey uh, for feedback. Um, also with those, we'll share all of the links uh, to the websites referenced during today's. Uh, there we go, Ivy's got the survey in the chat. Um, just want folks to know that there is a question. If you want to be introduced to a presenter through us, I am very, very happy to make those introductions because um, it really, it, yeah, it really is empowering when you have folks like all these beautiful people here um, walking through different steps. Um, they all bring uh, different gifts um, to support your emerging or expanding your business. And so with that, I'll just kind of let it hang for any last minute questions. I, I love that that you're available and that the people the panelists are available too because uh, sitting through a, a session like this and getting all this information kind of thrown at us, it's 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 kind of might seem daunting, um, but it's just so good to have um, you all. To, to reach out to and help walk through some of these processes and these steps for especially the emerging um, entrepreneurs who have all these questions and don't know where to start and, um, and are confused, maybe confused. So, um, so it's really good that they can reach out to you, Danny, um, and then all the other panel the panelists as well. Um, I was just wondering if um, Dan Cornelius could uh, talk a little bit about, um, since we're all on, um, and I think all the, the people that are on this call are uh, native, um, could you talk a little bit about the, the uh, that, that, that uh, what is that that you give to producers, native producers? Uh, trademark? Yeah, the trademark, yes. Uh, yeah, Intertribal Ag Council has a, um, a made and produced by American Indians trademark. It's a, it's, it's like a USDA organic, you know, certification, except for native businesses. And it's a free program. There's little stickers um, that you can put on packaging, or you can get a digital version that you can incorporate you know, it right in, on to, if you're doing printed labels uh, or packaging, you can put that logo on. And then there's also a directory. If you go to indianagfoods.org, that's the website for the American Indian Foods Program and uh, applications on there. Basically just need to be a tribal member or, um, or tribally owned business. Miigwech. So Danny, if, if, if there's um, 
or anybody else on this call, like uh, Dan was talking about like packaging and if people need a loan to figure out um, how to purchase bags for their wild rice or, or things like that, is that something that um, one of these panelists could, could help kind of guide through that process or anything yeah. else? Yeah, I, I think in the survey, the last question is asking, what else do you need for your business? So you can be as specific as, as you need to be. Um, and we'll forward that along to one of the folks, um, either if they're represented here, great, but otherwise, um, I would love to help anybody kind of sort through those things and refer them in the right direction. Because um, I think through ACO and through other organizations across the state, we've got a lot of um, partnerships and empowering um, kind of group of folks that are in this movement um, that have already kind of solved some of these issues for themselves and would be, I think, very happy to share where they're source, sourced from. So like, for example, when I was at ACO's farmer's market last summer with Mazan Tea, I have like a wax type of packaging and um, Native Wise Farm had offered me um, their more sustainable option uh, for packaging. So there's people out there that are willing to share um, and it's just getting us all connected. So that's what we're here to do. That's great. Um, I, wanna, I wanna say uh, chi miigwech to all our panelists uh, for sharing and um, providing us with um, you know, technical and, and uh, loan support resources. Um, and we will be, um, I will be sending out an email to, to all the registrants and also sharing this recording with you all, um, as well as putting it out on our uh, Niwen Indigenous Food Market uh, web uh, Facebook page. Uh, so, and then, <laughs> These these uh, uh, the, these resources that Danny has been putting in the chat, we will um, try to compile all of that and also uh, put that give that out to all of you as well. So um, feel free to 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 reach out if you have any questions. Um, please fill out the survey. Um, that'll get that will help us help you um, uh, more, and we will also share that with. The panelists as well. And so um, I guess if there isn't any other um, questions, I, I want to say chi miigwech to, to Danny, um, who's just been a great facilitator and a, a advocate for uh, Indigenous and BIPOC food producers um, in, in Minnesota and beyond. And um, I always forget to thank Becky, who has been just an amazing Zoom tech uh, extraordinaire. Uh, so uh, miigwech to Becky. Um, so uh, we're ahead of time. So if, if there's any any last minute questions before we we close this session, feel free to pop on and put it in the chat. We'll give like one more minute for someone to do that. And any last um, any anything um, from any of the panelists that you forgot to share that you'd like to share in this last minute or so, uh, feel free to unmute. Um, yes, I'd like to say one thing. Um, this is Elizabeth. Yes, hi. Um, I guess if anybody has any questions about um, uh, th th my advocacy for Monomen, you can contact me. I left my number and my email in the chat. Um, yeah, this is... Um, something that's really important to you know the, the future and the business of wild rice so for new um, information um yeah just contact me miigwech for the health of the rice okay. yes yeah thank you Yes, and it was so great to bring our, our Guinean youth out to your rice camp this last um, fall. And so um, miigwech for that opportunity and um, sharing with them um, all of the, all of the, you know, adversities and, and things that are challenging 
uh, to the wild rice and yeah. um, that were there that well, and steps to protect it too. So miigwech for that. That was wonderful. I mean, some of the kids haven't even been in a boat before. Right. So, yeah. So I was really happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was that fun. was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Miigwech. All right, uh, we're gonna we're gonna close the session. So miigwech again. Um, have a beautiful day, and um, hope your sugar bush uh, adventures are turning out um, wonderful and plentiful. And enough is enough, I guess, with that. So um, have a good day. Miigwech, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, miigwech, Danny. <laughs>